Welcome everyone, today we'll talk about strings and UTF-8. UTF-8 is a variable with encoding, so it represents a Unicode code point. We will see how this is very powerful because it can represent different alphabets, emojis, for some languages this is of course necessary. What is a string? A string is a collection, this is why it is here after the lesson about vectors. So a string is a collection of bytes. And if we want to be more specific, a string is a wrapper around a vector U8. Rust has only one string type. And this can be confusing because there are different ways to represent them. There is the string capital S. In its core, Rust has only the str type. We'll talk about uh, the different uh, things that we can do with strings, uh, how to create a string, how to update a string, concatenation with strings, uh, it's, this is a bit tricky, indexing into strings, uh, this will be a very interesting part, slicing strings and iterating over strings. How can we create uh, a string in Rust? We can create a string in different ways, let mute s equal string double colon new and then we call this method. This is exactly the same as we did with vector. And this initializes an empty string. Sometimes we want to initialize a string with some initial values. We can do this in different ways. One is this, let data equal this, uh, which is type at str. You can type, for example, let s equal data to string. So we use this to string method to create uh, this new string from a string uh, slice. We can also use this method directly. Let s equal initial contents dot to string. Let's print it. Let's say initial content. But my favorite way to create a new string is this one. Let s equal string from initialized using from cargo run initialized using from. Why UTF-8 encoded strings? Because UTF-8 encoded strings are super powerful. We can have different languages, different alphabets like this. Some people might recognize their own alphabet. And this is the power of the UTF-8. How to update an existing string. So for example, let's say that we initialize a string, for example, using the from method. How can we, let's say, for example, we want to add something after this hello. We can use the push underscore str. We can use this push str with word and we can print. Yes, so this prints uh, hello world. If you want to push a single character, this method is recommended. For example, let's say that we want to add an exclamation mark at the end of the hello world. We can have this s dot push exclamation mark. This takes a single character. Let's print this again. You see in the second case, so we have also the exclamation mark. Concatenations with strings. We have this in JavaScript, we have this in Java. What about Rust? We probably would expect a plus operator. Let's start with this. We have a string s1 equal string from foo. And then we have a second string with string from bar. Let's try to concatenate them. Let s3 equal s1 plus S2, like this, cargo run, error, mismatched types, expected at str found a string. Okay, the compiler is annoying, but here is the solution. They suggest as the second argument of the concatenation to add an ampersand. Let's try. And now it works. You can read full bar. The reason for this is in the signature of how the add function is implemented. This is the signature of the add method that also uses the plus sign. Fn add, it, we have a self, and then we want, you see, this at str as a type, and it returns a string. It's very important to understand that this doesn't work. If we add on line 67 an ampersand also on the first S1, which 
is the reference. You should check the references and borrowing and ownership. It doesn't work. You see, there is a downside here with the plus. We need to use a string and then references. S1 can't be used after this one. Now let's try to concatenate, for example, three strings. And let's say that we want to concatenate the three words one, two, and three. How can we concatenate these strings? We can do something similar to what we did before. Let's combine the one, two, three. Let's try. It worked. Now I'll introduce a macro that I really like. We can concatenate multiple strings using format exclamation mark, which is a macro. The format macro is very similar to the println, but instead of string in output, it concatenates, it formats one or multiple strings. And I think it's very elegant in how we can type it. Check the difference between line 83 and 78, cargo run. Are you surprised? You should be surprised now. One value board here after move. The problem is on line 78. If I comment the line 78 and 79, it works. When we concatenate using a plus, the first string can't be a reference. If after this I try to use the one on line 82, it will not work because I, I concatenated it in a different way on line 78. The format macro has this huge advantage that all the strings are references. Better syntax? I would recommend to use the format concatenation unless you really need to you know concatenate just two strings just once and now something not very easy which is indexing into strings let s1 string from hello and then let's try to get the index for example of the first character let's try error string cannot be indexed by integer. What? A string in Rust cannot be indexed with an integer, and how am I supposed to find the, an index in a string? Finding an index in a, in a string in Rust is very tricky and I think very hard. I can use a range, we will see this soon, but I can't use an index. Why? <laughs> The reason is because Rust decided to do this UTF-8 encoded string. UTF-8 strings, they can have different amount of bytes depending on the alphabet. For hello, the length of the string, it will be five. For namaste, it's not four. For this Russian, it's not 12, but it's 24. So it's using more characters, single characters to create the string. We got the flexibility here of using in a simple way UTF-8 characters, but we are losing, sadly, the indexing by integer. Slicing strings in Rust. This should be namaste. And then we can define a slice of the string and then we can print this slice. Let's try cargo run. We need to uh, comment line 86 and 87. Cargo run. We printed this character. This is very tricky because this really depends on the type of language, but uh, this is just to tell you that you can slice strings in Rust with ranges. Depending on the alphabet, I might not be able, and this can throw some errors. Let's see how we can iterate over a string. Let's try to iterate over this uh, string. A very convenient method is the charts method. We go char by char and you'll be surprised by the output of this one. Let's try this out. This is from the previous one but we have one, two, three, four, five, six. You see we, they have these sort of accents that are not in the single letter but they are still considered a chart. Are you surprised? I was. <laughs> We can also iterate over strings using bytes. We can use, for example, here for B 
in this string dot bytes and we can print all the single bytes. Let's try this out. And this is becoming crazy because here we are printing the single bytes. Rust is trying to make something universal. So I can use the Hindi alphabet, the English alphabet, seamlessly using strings. But of course, this is very, very tricky. By default, the strings in Rust support all the alphabets. This is mind blowing. Like check this from line 39 to line 50. By default, it uses UTF-8 characters, we are losing some stuff, of course, for being able to just use different languages. In the next lesson, we will talk about hash maps. I'm a huge fan of this data structure. But here we went more into the details on how to use methods for strings. Strings, docs, rust. There is documentation for all the methods in rust here.